With the auditory system, with hearing, we really have two things that we have to talk about. We have to talk about the ear, and we have to talk about cortex. As I, um, as I said before during the, uh, I think uh, when we were talking about the brainstem, once information comes in from the vestibular cochlear nerve, from cranial nerve eight, and it reaches the cochlear nuclei, there can be a lesion in the cochlear nuclei, there certainly can be a lesion in the vestibular nerve, and there can be all sorts of problems out in the ear, but between the cochlear nucleus and primary auditory cortex, there's nothing. Nothing can go wrong because everything is bilateral, bilaterally carried. All the information is carried on both sides. And we simply don't have any um, conditions such as, say, ALS that, that just rips it, that destroys uh, auditory path pathways. Uh, not only do we not have a disease that destroys auditory pathways bilaterally, but we also don't, uh, we don't, bilateral lesions in this pathway don't happen. So there is no lesion that can produce or does produce a loss of hearing except for a lesion of the cochlear nucleus, which I should remind you, Bobby had that. So he was deaf in one ear, but he still had hearing in the other ear. All right, so that's why, that's the justification why we're gonna spend the bulk of our time in the ear, and then we're gonna jump over to cortex. When we talk about the ear, we, there are three parts to the ear. There's the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The external ear is from the outside. It starts with the pinna, which is gonna help funnel uh, changes in air pressure in through the ear canal, or more formally, the external auditory meatus all the way to the eardrum, or again, uh, the uh, tympanic membrane. So that is, so the external ear starts at the pinna, ends at the uh, tympanic membrane, where it gives way to the middle ear, which is a, a little chamber all isolated by itself. Takes you from the uh, uh, tympanic membrane to the oval window. The oval window is a, is a membrane that, um, uh, that uh, is part of the cochlea. Um, and so what is in the middle ear are a series of three tiny little bones. They're called baby bones. And baby bones is ossicles. So a baby bone is an ossicle. And there are three uh, uh, ossicles that are going to uh, take this information from the tympanic membrane and deliver it to the cochlea. The cochlea is... Uh, sitting right here, it's, uh, it's in the inner ear. Uh, the cochlea shares the inner ear with the vestibulum, which is the sensory part of the vestibular apparatus, uh, of the vestibular system. This is a sensory uh, organ for the uh, vestibular system. This is sensory organ for the, for the auditory system. They share the inner ear. The, uh, the, the final ossicle called the stapes is gonna stamp on the oval window of the cochlea and set up a fluid uh, wave that is going to affect the sensory neurons or the sensory cells, excuse me, sensory cells in the cochlea. Those sensory cells are going to then uh, respond and send a message to the first neurons in the pathway, the auditory neuron, neurons. These are spiral ganglion neurons that give rise to the auditory nerve, to the cranial nerve eight, to the vestibular cochlear root of, the, um, of cranial nerve eight. So there are two basic parts to this system. There's this sensory neural part where you have the sensory neuron and the neuron and then there's this external part. And the, what's the point of this external part? It's simply to get the sound and funnel it in to the oval window. So it's a, it's a conductor. It, we are just taking the sound from out here and we're delivering it to here with as little uh, loss of amplitude as possible. And so this, the external ear and the middle ear are the are the part of the, uh, I think I actually have this here, the external ear and the middle ear are 
the conduction, that's where the conduction of sound is accomplished, external and middle ear. And then there's the inner ear where there's a sensory neural um, uh, processing of that. Now the stimulus amplitude, this is all about getting tiny little <laughs> vibrations in the air and you being able to hear them. So if I just go, you really can't hear that. Um, I'm going to, we're gonna have all sorts of, if there's just moving, if I do this, air's moving out here, but I don't hear, I hear, what I hear is my, my sleeve moving. I don't hear the, the moving uh, air. And so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna funnel in and I'm gonna increase the amplitude of the uh, air pressure changes in the external ear. I'm gonna lose amplitude in the middle ear, but I'm gonna lose as little as, as possible through a trick that we're gonna look at. And then once we get into the cochlea, we're gonna take this uh, relatively small amount of information and we're gonna blow it up, we're gonna amplify it. And we're gonna amplify it using um, cochlear amplification, which is one of the cool, really super cool stories of 20th century uh, neurobiology, how that works. Okay, so, um, so that's our, our, our journey through the ear and then we're gonna jump over to, um, to the cortex. We're gonna take a brief foray and talk about how language is produced and then we'll talk about how language is understood. But to start with, before we get started on the ear even, we're gonna just take a look at the stimulus. What are the characteristics of sound waves?